Last week, I looked at a program by the name of X Wallpaper, and honestly, it's a great tool. But because I want a super minimal wallpaper setter, because that's really all you need for a program like that, someone suggested another application by the name of HSet Root. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Now, in many ways, X Wallpaper and HSet Root are very similar. One thing you might notice that is different, though, is that if you go and run HSet Root without passing anything into it, it is going to try and set your wallpaper. What it's going to do is basically just go and clear it. In a minute, I'll go through the image setting modes that are the same in both applications, but before we get to that, we actually have one new one. This is Extend. So what this is basically going to do is resize the image so that it tries to take up as much of the screen as possible without modifying the aspect ratio. So you might end up with black bars if it doesn't do the next thing. So the next thing it does is it takes the last line of pixels and then repeats them until the edge of the screen. So let's go and do it on, say, this one right here. And you might notice it is doing something kind of weird. So it seems like with multiple monitors, it isn't exactly extending it correctly. On my third monitor and my second monitor, it's fine. But for some reason, on the middle monitor, it is doing something weird. So it's taking the last line of pixels from the other side and extending that out. But what it's supposed to do is take, say, whatever this line of pixels is here, and then just keep repeating them until it hits the edge. So I think it's a bit more noticeable on one of the other images I have. So on the image I used last time, the picture of Richard Stallman. So this one right here, stallman.jpg. This only seems to be a problem with three monitors. On images where it's not really noticeable what changes along the edge, and when it's not breaking with three monitors, I think this is actually a really cool feature. And for some wallpapers, I might actually use it if I don't want to lose anything that's important along the borders. Now, the next one we have is dash cover. Now, don't ask why it's dash instead of dash dash. I have no idea. That's just how the application was made. So dash cover is basically going to be the exact same thing as doing zoom over an X wallpaper. So what it's going to do is basically zoom in on the image as much as it needs to to eliminate all of the black borders without actually modifying the aspect ratio of the image. So let's go and run it on this image again. So the Stallman image dot JPEG and it does this. So as you can see, for some images, it's going to become really blurry because you basically just zoomed in on it. For other ones, though, if the image is, say, larger than your screen would have otherwise been, it's going to look perfectly fine. So, for example, with the wall.png like I was using before, and this is the standard way I go and set my wallpaper. The next one we have is full, which is the same as focus over an X wallpaper. So what this is going to do is resize the image, but it's going to resize it without modifying the aspect ratio and unlike the previous one, it won't zoom in on the image so much that it ends up cropping the image. So you may end up with black borders if you do use this option. So let's go and run it with the wall.png. And that's going to look a little something like this. So my image right here isn't exactly 16 by 9. So I'd much rather lose a bit of the edges just so I can fill up the entire screen. So let's go and run it on a different image. Let's go and run it on the Stallman one again. So pictures, stallman.jpg. And it looks like this. So this image isn't 1080 pixels high by default. So what this option has gone and done is stretched it so it does fit that entire space, but it hasn't gone and cropped it. So we still do have these massive black borders onto the sides. The next one we have is fill, which is the same as stretch over an X wallpaper. So this is going to basically resize the image and also break the aspect ratio. So this is going to make it so you don't have black bars anymore, but it is going to basically distort the image like this. Also, unlike the cover option, it won't zoom in on the image, so you will get all of the detail in the image, even though it may be a bit distorted. We also have a center option, which over an X wallpaper would also be called center. Basically, it's going to take the image, it will stick it in the center of the screen, and it won't do any resizing or anything like that. It's just going to take the image as it is and pop it down in the center like this. And likewise, we also have a tile option, which over an X wallpaper would also be called tile. And this is basically going to take the image and not resize it, it's just going to place it as many times as it needs to, to actually fill up the screen. Now, unlike X wallpaper, HSet Root actually has a built-in way to do some image manipulation, more than just, I guess, doing a little bit of cropping. I did talk about this in the previous video, though, that I don't really think a wallpaper setter really needs this functionality. If I wanted to do it from the command line, I could always go and use something like Image Magic. But because the functionality is here, let's actually go and have a look at how it works. So the way we do this is we set the image like we normally would. So let's say with the cover option on wall.png. And then after that, you can include one of the options you want to use. So let's say the dash blur option. And then you pass in a number for the level of blur you want. So one will look at a little something like this, which isn't really that much blur. You probably can't even tell that it is blurred right now. 
But let's go and set it to something like 4. And 4 will look like that. Then let's go up to 10. Obviously, the more blur that you apply, the longer it's going to take to actually set the image. Let's try to set it to something like 100. And eventually, it will set the image. And there we go. Now, you can go and chain these options together. So you can have, say, blur, and then also contrast applied to it as well. So let's say contrast set to 5. Now, the order you go and set this is going to be very important. So what it's done here is blurred the image and then up the contrast of the blurred image. But if we go and, say, set this in the other direction, it will then set the contrast first and then blur. In some cases, this can produce a much different result. In other cases, it's going to look fairly similar. And in this case, as you can see, it looks like this. Now, if we just go and run contrast by itself, it's going to look a little something like this. Now, when you do contrast, the scale starts from 1. So anything lower than 1 is going to be less contrast than the base image. So let's say we do 0.5. This will then be half the contrast that would normally be seen in the image. So obviously, if we go all the way down to 0, then now there is no contrast whatsoever. So the entire image is just gray. Now, for whatever reason, brightness is on a different scale. So if we go and set brightness and then we set it to, say, 0, this is going to be the base image. And then 1 is going to be max brightness, which is going to be a completely white screen. So then, say, 0 0.5 is going to be halfway between those two points. Now, with the dash gamma option, it goes back to the same scale the contrast was on. So in this case, if we do 1, this is going to be the base image. Anything less than 1 is going to be less gamma than is in the base image. And then anything more than 1 is going to be more gamma. So let's say set it to something like, I don't know, 5. And that looks like that. We can also flip the image by using the flip V, flip H, and flip D options. Now, flip V and flip H are fairly self-explanatory. Flip vertical, flip horizontal. Flip D means flip diagonal. Now, what it actually means is rotate it by 90 degrees. So if we do something like flip D, because I have my third monitor here, it does actually go and break it. But on my second monitor, the image has now been rotated 90 degrees. So let's go and just set it back to, say, flip V. And this just basically means set the image to be upside down. We can sharpen the image by using the sharpen option. Now, what this is going to basically do is it's not actually going to work properly. So setting sharpen to 1 means... The image has been sharpened. If we go and say set it to something like 0.5, this is the exact same as not having the option there at all. So I'm not really sure what the deal is there. It seems to be sharpen on, sharpen off. If we go set it to say something like sharpen, I don't know, 2. This is the exact same as sharpen 1. So it seems like the option's just not working properly. Now, if you're one of those people who doesn't want to set a wallpaper image, but you still don't just want to see a black screen, this application does let you go and set a solid color as well. So there's a couple of different forms the colors can be in. So we have RGB as a hex value. We have RRGGBB as a hex value. We have RRGGBBAA as a hex value. Or you can also do one of the X colors. So red, blue, cyan, salmon, magenta, things like that. So let's do something like, let's say, H set root uh, dash solid and set the color to be salmon. So salmon is going to look a little something like this, or we can go set it to something like, uh, I don't know, 5F6, uh, uh, whatever color that's going to be. I guess some sort of green. Now, for solid color is a bit too minimal for you, and you're not running three monitors. I'm not really sure what the deal with three monitors is in this case, but for whatever reason, it just doesn't play nicely with it. It's fine with two. It's fine with one. Three, it just does weird things with. What we can go and do is go and set a gradient. So the way that we go and do this is run H set root. And you can't just go and run the gradient option directly. What you need to do is go and specify the colors you want to use. So the way we do that is with the dash add option. So let's say we add red and we also add something like blue. Now what we do with the gradient option is we specify the angle of the gradient. This is a bit of a buggy part as well. So anything besides 180 seems to occasionally break. So if we go set it to something like, say, 75, it sometimes does things like this. I'm not really sure what the deal is there. Let's say we set it to something like 20. Okay, 20 is fine. So 180 is fine. And then within 30 or 40 degrees, either side of 180 is fine. And I guess 30 or so degrees above zero is also going to be fine. But anything in between those ranges acts a bit weirdly. So if you want to have a gradient, you can very easily go and make this with something like Image Magic and not have to deal with this hassle. 
like with X wallpaper, we can go and set a wallpaper to the virtual screen maintained inside of X rather than each of our individual monitors. So the way we do that is with the root option. So H set root dash root. And let's say we set it with the cover option. So cover wall.png. I explained how this works last time, but as we can see, all three of my monitors together makes up a virtual screen that is 5760 by 1080. So what this has gone and done is taken a single wallpaper and then instead of setting on each individual monitor, it's used it to fill up every single monitor starting from the center point. Now one thing that does seem to be missing here is being able to set a wallpaper for a specific monitor. I don't ever go and do this, but I know that some people like to have like one wallpaper on their second monitor, one wallpaper on their main monitor, so on and so forth. It is kind of weird that it's missing, but just keep that in mind if it is an option you want to use. So this application is a little bit buggy, but you know what, for what I'm trying to use it for, it works absolutely perfectly. I don't really care about the image manipulation options, I don't really care about most of the image setting options, I just use the cover option and that is all I touch. So if that's all you really need, I couldn't recommend this application more. Honestly though, if you're using X wallpaper already, there's not really much else you'll get out of this from switching to it. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Yoakim, Donald Kobinian, Andre Nathan, David Montazar, Will, Chico Bento, Joseph Mitchell, Peter D, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you want to support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, sell, leave pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute, if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and... I'm out.